Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Today with Ward. I'm Ward Simpson, and we have some special guests for you today. You know, one of the pillars at God TV is Israel. Today's show is on Israel, the apple of God's eye. And I want you to stay tuned as you meet two um, special guys that God is using powerfully, really powerfully around the world with uh, movies and productions and just with God's heart for Israel. You know, you may have seen the movie already, The Hague or Jerusalem. We've aired it on God TV. We're going to air it again after this episode because you're going to meet the producer and director, Brian Sanders, as well as Jack Vandertang, who God is using powerfully. So this episode of Today with Ward, friends, we know is going to encourage you. It's going to be a blessing to you. And I want you to stay tuned as we talk about the apple of God's eye. God TV is passionate about the land of Israel, standing in covenant with her for the last 25 years. We support the Holy Land in many ways. We program broadcasts from and about Israel, including Bless Israel. We are a voice for Israel, a blessing to Israel. You, me, all of us, we're media missionaries that take this gospel to the ends of the earth. Encounter Israel from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. Out of Zion with Ron Cantor. We bless you here from Zion. We bless you from the land of Israel. God TV arranges regular Arise Zion tours to Israel, inviting viewers across the world, seeing the Bible brought to life in profound, life-changing ways. When people come to Israel, the thing that they say most often is, I can't believe how much this trip changed my life. The Israel Insider is God TV's email subscription newsletter about the Holy Land, featuring regular updates. Roots and Reflections with Barry Segal. Jewish Voice with Rabbi Jonathan Burness. God's plan of redemption was to and through of people that are known today as the Jewish people. Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Messianic Rabbi Schneider. No one could deny the experience they were having as the God of Israel was pouring forth His Spirit in the land of Israel that spread to the entire world. Jerusalem Dateline. Love Israel with Dr. Baruch Korman. We also broadcast documentaries and films concerning Israel, as well as live prayer events, including the annual day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. We are coming live to you from Jerusalem, 30 different nations together. Glad that you are here. And the Feast of Tabernacles Conference. At God TV, we are called to be Israel's friend, defender, advocate, and watchman on her walls. Israel the apple of God's eye. We watch a lot. How much of it is connecting us with God? Fresh revelation. Prophetic gets connected to the apostolic. It's mobilized. Old favorites. Christ belongs to all people. Front row seats to live events at the click of a button. You don't have to feel guilty binge watching when it's helping you to overcome. Praise God, you are the reason that we do what we do. Online and offline. Download and get connected to God-focused content. The God TV app, available on Android, iOS, Roku, and Apple TV. Well, praise God, Jack. It's nice to have you, Brian. Nice to have you. My goodness, you guys are doing an amazing work. Thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom. Thank you for what you're doing for Israel. It's our pleasure. Yeah. You know, um, Israel is a pillar of God TV. We stand by Israel. We pray for Israel. We're her intercessor, her advocate, her defender, her voice, her evangelist. And uh, so Israel is very, very close to our hearts here at God TV and with Amen. our viewers all around the world. Amen. They love Israel. We thank God for their love for Israel. And uh, I know that you do as well. And um, we're very privileged to have you here. Thanks for flying all the way in from the Netherlands. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have great, we have an office in Norway. We have one in Germany. We have one in England. 
and other offices around the world, but um, I have many friends in the Netherlands. And, and I know that you, um, the movie that you made, you know, it, it was The Hague or Jerusalem. I want to start right away there because our viewers may not have seen that movie and I want to encourage them to watch it. We're going to broadcast it a number of times on God TV. But The Hague, to some people, I don't know if they really get it. So can you just begin by explaining to our viewers about The Hague? It's important to know that if you are a believer, you know that Satan is making a copycat from all kinds of things. Yes. One of the things you never have thought about it is about Jerusalem. Is there a copycat, a counterfeit of Jerusalem? That's, I've never met somebody, but I had an experience and the Holy Spirit sp started to talk about it, that he's angry on my city because the Hague has stolen the promises of Jerusalem. And the Hague is in the world, the legal capital. So we have there, for example, the Peace Palace. It's the highest court of the world. But the original name is not the uh, Peace Palace. It's the Temple of Peace. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because we know that one day the law will go out from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And now the law is going out from The Hague. Mm. And what I saw is, and special with people from the United States who visit me, and they said, oh, The Hague. Oh, we thought it's the name of a court. We didn't know that's a city. Mm -hmm. So then I met Brian on the NRB and we start to talk and I was thinking about maybe it's good to show the people how important it is that we are going to pray that the promises will not be in The Hague, but that there will be a restoration of Jerusalem also about international law, about the Torah mm -hmm. will go out from Zion. Yeah. That's the reason that I started to think and to talk with him about making a film. Wow. Wow, that's awesome, Brian. Yeah. You produced it, huh? I was privileged and honored uh, to be asked by Jack to produce this film for something that he was seeing in his own backyard that just wasn't being reported. Mm -hmm. And just like Jack said, The Hague is it's not just a court, it's, it's, an, it's a city. Yeah. It's about 40 minutes south of Amsterdam, and it's this beautiful 13th century uh, uh, beautiful city. You can see the richness in the Dutch history there and the monarchy presence that still exists today. But uh, The Hague is also known as the city of uh, the Inter International City of Justice and Peace. Right. And it's also the second highest seat in the United Nations. Now, you, if you turn your TV on every day, you're going to see a lot of anti-Semitism, anti-Israel rhetoric coming from the UN. But since The Hague is the second highest court in the United Nations, we're seeing uh, potential that could be more detrimental to Israel than its higher headquarters in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so what Jack was sharing with me and the, and the research we, we dug deep into was that there's two courts that could be very integral, detrimental to Israel. And one is the International Court of Justice. It's in the Peace Palace. Uh, the Peace Palace is this beautiful building. It was built in 1913 by Andrew Carnegie. And, um, you know, the International Court of, Ju uh, um, International Court of Justice uh, is supposed to be this building, uh, the court that has to do with rivals between nations, with lands and borders, occupation. And then there's another court called the ICC, the International Court Criminal Court. And what that court does, it, it, it focuses on crimes made by individuals uh, that committed the most heinous or crucial uh, war crimes. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to highlight what is going on in The Hague that's just not being reported. We hear all the anti-Semitism from the UN, but we're not hearing what's going on in Jack's backyard in The Hague that we kind of wanted to raise, uh, blow the shofar, you mm -hmm. know, through the body of Christ, you know, sound the shofar, uh, get the word out for the watchmen on the wall that pray for Israel day and night and give the Lord no rest as we, we, we hear in scripture. So that was our intent, because in the title itself, there's a choice that needs to be made, the Hague or Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The Hague representing the world's declaration of what they foresee as the legal capital world. And then you have Jerusalem represent, representing God. You know, Isaiah 2, 3 talks about mm -hmm. the law shall go forth out of Zion. Yeah. And, you know, Jack nailed it when he said, you know, the Hague is representing the world. They're doing a counterfeit declaring a counterfeit that the, the law will go forth or the legal capital of the world, so to speak, is coming out of The Hague. Wow. And so you hear world leaders like former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, and other world leaders echoing this. And Ban Ki-moon actually made this declaration at the 100th anniversary of the Peace Palace and making this 
profound statement that says, you know, the, the Hague is a legal capital of the world. Well, for us in the body of Christ, when we hear things that come against God's word, mm -hmm. his law and his principles, we, we need to defend it. The church can't be silent. We need to stand up and say, well, that's not exactly true. Wow. The Bible says the law shall go forth from Zion and the word from Jerusalem. And, you know, when Yeshua, Jesus comes back and establishes his millennial reign, he's going to do that in the city of the great king, his city, the city of God in Jerusalem from Zion. Wow, wow. Yeah. Man, praise God. That's Brian Sanders. Yeah. We're talking to Brian and Jack Vandertang. And the question is, The Hague or Jerusalem? We'll have more right after this. Nine resolutions are introduced today in the United Nations to condemn Israel. 38% of all the resolutions of the United Nations Human Rights Council have been directed at Israel alone. History has proven when rulers or nations are going against God's land or his capital or his people, always there will be consequences. I will make Jerusalem a cup that will stagger the surrounding peoples. Even Judah will be caught up in the siege against Jerusalem. When that day comes, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who try to lift it will hurt themselves, and all the earth's nations will be massed against her. There's a place in this world where important decisions are made for all nations. It's called The Hague. The city and the courts may be beautiful, but its political bias can prevent a nation from reaching its full destiny. Uh, today, The Hague is known as the legal capital of the world, an epicenter of international justice and accountability. What's brewing in The Hague could be much more detrimental to Israel in the future. Anti-Semitism is so deeply ingrained in so many institutions that it's very hard to get out. Unfortunately, The Hague has also become one of the centers of twisting international law rhetoric into anti-Israel tools. So there's really a battle going on between who is the rightful legal heir to this world. Is it man there in The Hague, or is it the Lord himself here in the city of Jerusalem? The real law, God's law, the real law who will bring real peace, that will go out of sight and not from The Hague. Well, Jack, you know, like I said earlier, Israel is a pillar of God TV, and we want our viewers to be educated. We want them to understand what is going on around the world, especially with the anti-Semitism, the hatred towards the Jewish people. But even, as you said earlier in the show, there's a counterfeit. The Hague has become a counterfeit for God's plan for Jerusalem. Uh, but give our viewers an example of some of the cases that, that are taken to this um, court. One of the things is that uh, that the PA, the Palestinian Authority, mm -hmm. that it's not official state, is recognized in a way by the Peace Palace okay. to receive there an, uh, a case against this America, mm -hmm. that they have illegal moved their embassy to Jerusalem and they want to bring that in the case and they say that's not illegal, that's not legal, it's illegal, they have to move back the embassy. That's the thing what's going on. Another thing is that in the ICC, that's about people, there is a really a problem that anti-Semitism is very high in the top. So now they are trying to bring soldiers who have fought for Israel in Gaza or in Lebanon or on the West Bank, the so-called West Bank, mm -hmm. to bring there on court and to... Uh, Make them testify? Yeah, yeah, but also to, uh, to arrest them. Oh, and and I see. The, the problem is also that Israel is not official recognizing the ICC. But the problem is, imagine that you are the general and you have to be there and you're traveling in a nation what is recognizing ICC. Mm. They can arrest you on the airport and they can wow. bring you to the Hague. Wow. So that means that 
this case is really, and that's now a hot topic in Israel, and it will be a hot topic for a long I time. I want to make sure our viewers really got that. I want to make sure what Jack just said you really understood. This is political. Um, he's saying that the Palestinian Authority are bringing a case in The Hague against, Israel, uh, against America for moving their embassy. He's also saying that they want to arrest, they want to bring charges against the Israeli soldiers, for example. And he's also saying that even though Israel doesn't recognize this court, the nations that do recognize this court, if you travel to one of those nations, you could be arrested in the name of that court, yeah? Yes, and that's really a big concern. It's, it's that's a, a huge big concern. issue, and that's at the moment, it's, and it will be a long time, a hot issue yeah. in Israel. It's in yeah. the newspapers, it's everywhere, because what can they do? It's so powerful, it's worldwide institute, and they believe really because of the wow. feelings and the anti-Semitism against Israel. And I was there, personal, I was the only one who was there with somebody from Israel who brought a case against Mahmoud Abbas about all the things that he have done. Mm -hmm. And they said to, to us when we are there, this is the best case, this is so good. Mm -hmm. uh, all the materials, mm -hmm. and they're not doing anything with it. They refuse it, they are afraid or something. So you they can see that it. it's, it's wow. political, yeah. it's a political institute. And that's also what's going on. And we need to pray for that also, to, to pray for the safety of the Israeli soldiers. And we want you to watch that movie, The Hague or Jerusalem. You can go to our website, go to our app, watch it on demand or just look for it on our schedule, but make sure and watch it. You're gonna be really um, educated to see what is happening. And you need to be educated. You know, the Bible says that we perish from a lack of knowledge. And so this is a time to be informed, friends. This year, uh, look, Jesus is coming soon, and you need to get with the program. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about what happens in this, in this court. I know that I heard recently that the Pope and the the head imam were supposed to be getting together there or something? That's correct. Uh, the Pope and the Grand Imam have formed an alliance and okay. uh, they're inviting the- The Grand Imam, he's, grand where imam. is he from? Egypt. E Egypt. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, they formed an alliance and you might have seen it in the news, pictures or even news reports, mm -hmm. but they're, they're calling and inviting all the world's religious leaders mm -hmm. to The Hague mm -hmm. uh, for what they call uh, the Declaration of Friendship Treaty for all the world uh, religious leaders to sign a pact, mm -hmm. a peace covenant. Mm -hmm. So for as believers, one that those that study the word of God, when mm -hmm. you hear things like that, I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus even warned us mm -hmm. about trials and tribulations and things of happening in the end days. Yeah. And in this hour, when you hear things of, you know, world religions coming together, mm -hmm. that alarm should just, should go off in your head. And so we try, we, we toward the end of the film, we, we sound the shofar on that to get believers to be praying that, you know, we, we're hearing even reports today of a one world religion. We're hearing yeah. that from other uh, world religious leaders. Sure. And this is happening in The Hague where the Pope and the Grand Imam are inviting all the world's religious leaders to sign a pact, to sign a covenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be praying against that. And then it's so interesting that, you know, we're talking about the Peace Palace. But the original name, when they started, it was the Temple of Peace. Mm -hmm. It was our queen who refused to call it the Temple of Peace. And she started to use the Peace Palace. Mm. And now it's the Peace Palace, but they're bringing it back now more and more and more. Also on their website that mm. this is the Temple of Peace. Wow. And then it's so interesting what Brian is sharing, mm -hmm. that this all is coming together in the Temple of the so-called Peace. Yeah. The world peace, not mm. the peace from the Lord. Well, we want to thank you for what you're doing to expose what's happening there in The Hague. And we want our viewers to be informed and to be in prayer. These are the end times we're living in. There's no question about it and uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise. The whole world is against Israel, friends. And we know the Bible says that all nations will come against her. And that's why we at God TV stand with Israel. We at God TV are her friend, her advocate, and her defender, because we know that all roads lead to Jerusalem. You know, Brian, as a boy, as a young boy, I used to watch what we call European football, not American soccer. Yes. And uh, there was a show, it was all, all, all Roads Lead to Wembley. That was where the big final was. I don't know if you remember that. All Roads Lead to Wembley. But actually, All Roads Lead to Jerusalem. That is the city of peace. That is where Jesus is going to be coming back again. <laughs> oh, friends, we can't wait for that day. But we know that he's not coming again 
until his people say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Brian, I want to also thank you for standing with Israel. And I know that you've just done another movie on standing with Israel and your whole life is dedicated to Israel. So we thank God for you and we salute you here today on God TV. Oh, it's an honor to do whatever I can to you know, promote what God's doing in the earth and, all, and also the things that touch God's heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've said it before, Israel is the apple of God's eye. Yeah. It's his treasured possession. Yeah. It's, his, it's his inheritance. Mm, and, you good. know, for believers, I just want to encourage you wow. that if you've never been to Israel and you're looking to put something on your bucket list, you owe it to yourself to go. Yeah. You will be blessed. His presence is still there. You see all the marvels coming out of Israel. Yeah. And that's where the end times actually culminates. It's where the Father sent Yeshua, Jesus. He didn't send him to New York, L.A., London, or Paris. He sent him to Israel, mm. and that's where he's coming back Whoa. to set up his millennial reign. So uh, keep your eyes on Israel and continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, um, you know, we're supposed to give the Lord no rest until then. Amen. So oh, tell us a little man. bit about that movie you're making. I well, the Lord put it on my heart about five, six years ago. I started digging deeper into my Judeo-Christian roots. And wh what I found was that, I guess, perturbed me a little bit that I never heard any teaching on Israel in any of the churches I've been to in almost the 30 years of being a believer. And I wondered, and it was fascinating, it was mind boggling. And I wondered, why is this not being taught? We talk mm -hmm. about the great theologians in the church, but we don't talk about where the foundation of our faith began, mm -hmm. where the heritage of our faith, mm -hmm. where the Father sent Jesus to and where he's coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it, it got, it's clear all over scripture of how much the Lord loves Israel. There's no other nation God talks about more from Genesis to Revelation than the nation of Israel, approximately 2,400 times. And yet it's almost like a disconnect to, to us believers in the church. Yeah. And so I thought, you know, this is like the heritage of our faith. We should know more about it and we should be standing up more for Israel. Yeah. And why is the church silence? Silent when we hear all this anti-Semitism, whether it's coming from the liberal media or it's coming from the United Nations or even for the Hague for that matter. Yeah. Um, we should not be silent. We should be standing up for the things of God, for what God loves. And, you know, the Bible talks about that we are, us Gentiles are grafted in to this olive tree. And Paul paints this picture in Romans 11 of what the olive tree represents. And it represents Israel. We're the wild branches. The Jewish people are the natural branches. And the root of it is the Messiah, Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you hear things like that and you hear, uh, you know, teachings on the one new man that Paul talks about in Ephesians 2.15, where Jew and Gentile are coming together. I mean, I, I think that should get the church excited yeah. for the evangelical church that is uh, that prays for the next great awakening, the, the next great revival, mm -hmm. just like God TV here stands and, and, and looks forward and prays for that next revival to come. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to be praying for the souls in Jerusalem, the souls in Israel, and yeah. praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Because Romans 1, 16 is pretty clear. Paul talks about, he says, uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, yeah. for it is the power of God unto mm -hmm. salvation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we just stop right there. Yeah. But there's more to it. Mm -hmm. And it to says the to first. the Jew first yeah. and then to the Greek. And in some versions, it says to the Gentiles. Yeah. Wait a second here. So there's uh, more than just God's end time plan for the church. It's pretty good, Jack. Yes. <laughs> but it just gets me excited because we, we, we look forward to his return. We look yeah. forward Amen. to being with him. But there's more work. God has a, to understand God's full redemption plan, yeah. you have to include Israel and the Jewish people. They are the apple of his eye. He has a special endearment kind of love for no other people I mean, from, uh, than them. I mean, he loves all mankind, wow. and that's why he sent his son. But he has a, you know, he's not a respecter of persons. I get this all the time. I say, Brian, you're doing this film, but God doesn't love the Jewish people and the nation of Israel more than he loves the United States or London or the Christians or the Buddhists. Didn't he come for all of them? I said, that's true. Yes, he's not a respecter of persons. However, he is a sovereign God mm -hmm. and a sovereign God that made an everlasting eternal covenant with the Jewish people and also the land yeah. that he calls his. Yeah. There is no other land, no other nation on planet earth mm -hmm. In, 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 this, in this solar system that he calls his. And he gave it to the Jewish people as a deed and gave it to them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my heart in this film is, an, is to remind the global church of its biblical responsibility to stand with Israel. Right. And um, I well, pray they grasp God's heart in that. We yeah. can, you can watch the video on God TV or you can go to our video on demand. 
and ask yourself the question, why should you stand with Israel? I believe you already know the answer. Brian just said it so uh, perfectly. And uh, man, I'm just excited to have fellow friends that love Israel. Right. You know, we, um, we meet with the government every year. We go there and we have a media Christian summit with them. And, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. so um, we just thank God for you. We just got a couple of minutes, Jack, to say goodbye. And if you want to say any last words to our viewers, if anything that's on your heart. No, I think it's important that first the Jew, first Israel, that yeah. if you are going to, uh, to fight or to... For me, the most important is that there is only one solution for this world, and that is the coming of the Messiah back in Israel. So my life yeah. is dedicated that this Messiah will come and that we have to bless Israel, that we make jealous the Jews that will invite and they want to ask what it is, what we have that they don't have, and that they will say at the end what Jews have said, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes, that they will receive him with all the glory. And that's really, that's my dedication also, to, to make the Jews jealous and to bless them and to do the, everything what I can mm -hmm. to bring as soon as possible, yeah. the Messiah back to this world. And thank you also for hosting that prayer breakfast in The Hague for Jerusalem. Just before we leave, just tell our viewers about that. That was so powerful. I can tell you that it was the most important thing that I ever have done in my life. Wow. 22 years ago, the Lord spoke about the building, the Hall of Nights. It's the oldest governmental building of the world. Yeah. Everybody said it will never happen. But last June, 10 days before the event, I have done everything. They said, yes. And we have done there an event and the government of the Netherlands have said sorry for what happens in the Second World War. And it was amazing what happens. And we visit the Peace Palace. Uh, well, wow. it was, I think it, what I heard from the Jews, the Jewish community said this was the most important uh, event ever for us. Well, wow. praise God. Man. But my hair is more, more gray than before. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> well, keep up the good work. I want to okay. encourage everyone to watch the video, the movie, The Hague or Jerusalem. Also, I stand with Israel. Brian, 30 seconds, to final thoughts. You know, um, the Lord talks about in his word about Genesis 12, 3, on, uh, the, when you bless Israel, you will be blessed. Yes. And whoever curses Israel, you will be cursed. Yeah. And through you, all the nations will be blessed. Yeah. So there's a promise in there and you have a choice. And right now, the church is kind of riding the fence. If you say you love God and you love his word, you'll love everything that, that he stands for. Amen. And it's clear in scripture how much he loves the Jewish people in the nation of Israel. And so when you do that, you're actually blessing the Jewish people in the nation of Israel. Wow. And wow. it's a promise God is faithful to keep. Amen. Amen. You know, we don't want you just to offer lip service to say that you bless Israel. And every, every year we have a campaign on blessing Israel. It, be, it can become just lip service, but I want your heart to be for Israel, to be for God, the apple of his eye. Listen, I want to thank you guys for being here. Thanks for traveling all the way from thank the you. Netherlands to be with us today, and thank you for joining. So until next week, don't forget, tell somebody about Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for watching Today with Ward. Please join us again next time. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Please email today at God.tv. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit God.tv.